Hallelujah. We thank you. Amen. Pleasant good morning to all the saints gathered. I greet you in the name of our Lord, the Savior, and soon coming King. I want to invite you to stand with me as we begin our service today. I do want to welcome those of you who are joining online, on Facebook or YouTube. So nice having you joining us and being a part of our service today. We trust that God will truly meet you at the point of your need as he ministers unto you by his Holy Spirit. I mean, we want to go before the Lord in prayer as we bless the Lord, as we ask God to manifest himself in this place. Oh, gracious, merciful, and loving God, we bow in your presence. We thank you, dear God, for your goodness, your mercy, and your faithfulness. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our source. Thank you for being in control. Thank you for the anointing of your spirit that would rest upon us. An anointing that will destroy every yoke, lift every burden. An anointing, God, that will so lift us up that we will be where you would want us to be. God, we ask that you will manifest yourself through the life of the worship ministers, through the life of the musicians, God, the technicians, the ushers, God, even the preacher, in the name of Jesus. We take authority against every plan, work, and device of the devil. We say, let God arise in this place and let the enemy be scattered. Let the blessing of the Lord rest upon us, your people, that it will be a manifestation of the grace and of the mercy of God. And Father, we say thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. The worship ministers are coming to lead us in worship. Hallelujah. 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 As we bless and magnify the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, everyone. Hallelujah. It's such a privilege to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So just worship and praise God with me. Hallelujah. Let's give him thanks because he has been good to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we magnify your name, O oh God. Hallelujah, there is none like you. Oh God, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for your faithfulness, God. Oh God, you have been there with us, oh God. Oh God, even when our backs were against the wall, oh God, we can call upon you. And we say thank you, Jesus, for your keeping power. Hallelujah, we praise you this morning. We rejoice in you, hallelujah, because you are good, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and let us sing with me, hallelujah. Come and let us sing, hallelujah, to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords, hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, to the King we come. Come and let us sing, come and let us sing, come and let us sing to the King. Come and let us sing, come and let us sing, come and let us sing, come and let us sing to the King. Come and let us sing, come and let us sing, come and let us sing, come and let us to the King of Kings. Come and let us sing.
Worship you, come on and worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. We call upon Adonai. 
this morning. Hallelujah. Adonai means my Lord. So we call upon Jesus. Time from the rising, from the rising. 
Lamb of God. Come on and worship Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, holy, holy, holy. Are you, Lord, God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. For you are holy. He is worthy, he is worthy, hallelujah. Oh my king, worthy, worthy is the land, hallelujah, worthy is the land. For you are holy, holy, holy. Are you? Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God this morning for his goodness and his faithfulness towards us. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Could we just continue to lift our hands and our voices and continue to praise him and to magnify him? Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lord. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be magnified. Worthy to be glorified. Father, we bless you. We glorify you. We magnify your name. We thank you, O oh God, for your goodness and your mercies. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. Amen. I didn't tell you, tell your neighbor, good morning, good morning, or God bless you. Amen. But do tell your neighbor, God bless you. Amen. And a pleasant good morning to those who are joining us live online. We trust that you are doing well. It's so nice having you viewing this morning and being a part of our Facebook live. Amen. And those of you who will join later on on YouTube, Amen. It's always nice to have you be a part of our service, our worship service. Amen. God has been faithful, and I often celebrate the faithfulness of the Lord because God has brought us a mighty long way. Amen. If you look, and, and when, when you save as long as I have been saved, serving the Lord, living for Jesus Christ, I can tell you the Lord has brought me a mighty long way. And I tell persons often, stop believing the Lord small. You go through so much stress in believing the Lord for that little, little thing. In fact, it's the same stress to believe the Lord for a big thing. So believe the Lord big. The God that we serve is a big God. You know, it is said that God sometimes, or the God fits into the two-by-four context of our understanding and what we think we could receive or what we could believe for. And that should never be because God is the creator of the universe. And hence, when it comes to God, why just believe him for a dollar? Amen. I think our sister was given an example. Do you go to the bank to borrow a dollar? In fact, when you go to the bank, if you need a $1,000, you're looking to get two. If you, if you want five, you tell yourself you want a little two more, three more thousand. Generally, if you, if you want a hundred thousand, you tell yourself if you can get a hundred and twenty-five. So you're always looking for more. If we go to God, why just 
go to God believing, for, believing small when we can believe the Lord big. God is a big God. In fact, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 say, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or even think because he is God. Amen. So I do want to welcome you and God bless you. Those of you who are live online, we want to encourage you to share with your family members and your friends so that they can be a part of our service. I do want to um, bless you today in the name of the Lord. We want to just go through a few announcements quickly before we go into our offering, but to remind you that we have prayer Monday morning, Monday evening, sorry, 6 p.m. on our Zoom platform. Monday evening, 6 p.m. on our Zoom platform. I got a bit distracted there. Um, Bible study continues on Tuesday, also on the Zoom platform. We are in the book of Revelations. We're getting to the end of chapter 6. I tried to finish the last verses there, and it just couldn't happen. So we're going back to, um, on Tuesday to finish off the last verses and then enter into the, um, the seventh chapter as we try to go through the book of Revelation as quick as possible. Um, but God has been good, and we are really enjoying that. On Friday, we have in-house prayer meeting where we come together and pray and just believe the Lord. Um, on Saturday, we have a special service in that we have a, a foreign minister from England who is coming and he's just coming in our Saturday service as he's going to various churches as he's in the country. So in our Saturday service, we have a, a, a speaker who will be coming to share with us all the way from England. So we're looking forward for that this coming Saturday, the Lord's willing. Amen. So I think that um, I, I didn't say to, um, tomorrow, 9 a.m., our vacation Bible school begins. So 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, the Lord's willing, it will be our vacation Bible school. We begin from 9 a.m. and we go until 2 p.m. It's um, ages 3 to, eight years, to 18 years old. Um, some who 19 come also, but from 3 to 18 years old. And it's right here at the church, also in our office complex, in our car park. We're all over. Amen. But we are going to have a wonderful time. The theme, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And I know they have a tremendous program planned. So we're looking forward for that this coming week, the Lord's willing. Invite your, all your children, your grandchildren, your neighbor's children, your friend children, your colleagues' children, all the children. Children who are growing up too quick, children who are not who taking too long to grow up, all the children. Amen. And we're having a wonderful time. So that's it in terms of the general announcements. We want to go into our tithes and our, our offering. We want to give unto the Lord of our substance. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And we do want to give unto the Lord at this time of our tithes and of our offering. There will be that uh, account number and account number on the screen. And our BL Republic, Republic Bank Limited account number on the screen. So we want you to write down that account number so that you can give online. Some people still don't have it. And those of us who are in church, I would want to ask you, just go to your notes and you could write it down. Um, somebody just this morning was asking me for the number because sometimes you may not come to church with your offering and you, because you're so accustomed coming, you don't take down the number. But I want to advise you to write down the number so that you can give online. And then you have, if you have persons like myself, we like to bring offering into the house. So house come to church with the offering. So we bring the offering in the storehouse. Amen. So let's stand as we <clears throat> pray. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When it comes to offering, it's, it's also a form of worship where we worship the Lord with our tithes and with our offering. Hallelujah. So it's a solemn moment when we, hallelujah, when we would give. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you for this opportunity of giving, giving of our tithes, of our offering, of bringing God into your house. God, 
an offering unto you to say thanks. So we come worshiping you. We come celebrating your goodness and your faithfulness towards us. As we will give, we pray that you will so cause that your scripture to come alive, the word to come alive within our lives, where the scripture declares that you will open the windows of heaven and pour a blessing onto us. We thank you that that blessing, according to the word again, is pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So we thank you for doing this mighty work. We thank you for just meeting us at the point of our need, being our God, being in control of our lives. God, we take this opportunity to break generational curses of poverty and mediocrity and passivity, but that you will take us higher. We speak things that we not as though they were. We speak life. We speak success. We speak prosperity. We speak blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus. And God, we say thank you for doing this mighty work in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say amen. 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 The worship ministers will lead us in worship as the ushers will wait on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rejoicing. Rejoice in you. I'm gonna dance. I'm gonna dance and praise it. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside. Of me. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner. More than victorious.
As we remain standing, turn with me in your Bibles to Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, and we read verses 17 to 20 of Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. And here beginneth the reading of God's word. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. I want to speak to us this morning on what I call misplaced joy. Misplaced joy. Amen. We don't want to have misplaced joy. We want to have right joy. And rather than rejoicing that their names were written in heaven, they were rejoicing because they had power over demons. Let's pray. Gracious, merciful, and loving Father, we once again bow in your presence. We thank you for being God. You are God. And there is no God like you. We thank you for manifesting yourself in this place, in this house. It's your presence that makes a building a church. God, it's your presence that saturates the atmosphere, that God calls there to be a life, that God permeates our own spirit and causes transformation to occur. So God, we step out of the way and we ask that you will have your way. We ask that you will meet each one of us at the point of our need. Those who are weak, that you will make strong. Those who are sick, you will heal. Those who are downtrodden, God, you will uplift. But that you will so pour into our lives and take us from where we are to where we need to be. Moving us from glory to glory. We know that the battle is never against flesh and blood. So we take authority against every principality, every power, every spiritual wickedness in high place. We come against saying, let God arise in this place in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, all over where persons are viewing this service, I pray, oh God, that you will meet persons uh, at the point of their need. I pray that you will pour into their spirit. Uh, I pray that God that you will do a mighty and a glorious work. Uh, and I say thank you for doing it in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. Misplaced joy. The chapter begins with Jesus appointing 70 disciples. In some cases, um, the translation is 72. But we are reading from the King James Version. So it's 70 disciples that Jesus appointed. And he appointed them to go into the cities and surrounding regions with a message of peace. Saying unto them, if you enter into a house, or when you enter into a house, say unto them, peace be unto this house. And I pondered him sending out his disciples with that message of peace. And soon realized that Jesus was simply saying, there are many houses. I don't have peace. Many houses that are not homes where parents are at war. Children are disobedient. The home is not a happy place. People are not excited to return home. And therefore, Jesus sends his disciples with a message of peace. 
And we need peace. We need peace. The world needs peace. We need peace within our minds, within our hearts. And the scripture did say to those of us who are saved, who are born again of the Spirit of God, that God is able to give a peace that passes all understanding. I've come to know that God doesn't always deliver us out of the situation, but in the midst of the situation, God is able to give peace. So in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your crisis, we could have peace. Amen. And he sends forth his disciples with peace. And the Bible says, with that message of peace, and the Bible says they returned from their mission with an excitement, telling Jesus about their experience. And you would want to know if you send someone on a mission, at least they should return with some excitement. They, had, they went on their mission and they came back excited. And they said to Jesus, even the devils, they submit to us in thy name. That they recognize that there was power in the name Jesus. That there was healing in the name Jesus. That there was deliverance in the name Jesus. So not just in Acts, when Amen. The, the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin recognized that there was something about that name that they said to them, we don't want you anymore to speak in the name Jesus. But even as early, amen, before Jesus even went to the cross, that the disciples recognized that there was power in the name Jesus. Could I say to us, those of us who are born again believers, don't live your Christian experience not knowing the power of the name Jesus. Amen. Know, know the power. There is power in the name Jesus. Sometimes the only prayer you could pray is the name Jesus. 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 Somebody knows uh, what I'm talking about. Amen. Sometimes you're going through and you don't know what to say. Or sometimes uh, something wants to hold you down. Sometimes, uh, amen, whatever is happening, all you can say is Jesus. Sometimes you say it softly because it's in the middle of the night. You don't want to awake anybody. But sometimes you have to say it loudly, Bartimia, like Bartimaeus, uh, where you say, Jesus. O oh, son of David, have mercy upon me. Amen. There was something about the name Jesus. But Jesus said to them, in fact, Jesus initially responds with encouragement regarding the power, but, challenging, but challenges them through their misplaced joy. They should not be rejoicing because they had power over devils. They should be rejoicing because their names are written in heaven. You see, power and authority should not be our primary source of joy. Because it is a fleeting and temporary experience based upon power, based upon authority. It's not, it has no permanence. When it comes to the Christian, real joy comes from the Lord. And knowing the Lord, knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, is only then you experience real joy. And the Bible declares that the joy of the Lord is our strength. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. As a believer, please don't live your Christian life only knowing half joy or three-quarter joy, but know what it is to have the fullness of joy. The Bible says, in his presence, fullness of joy at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. So that we should seek to get into the presence of the Lord whereby we can have real joy. Moses said, I rather suffer the affliction with God's people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin, which is but for a season. You see, you could get some joy in some party, 
You could get some happiness, amen, based upon the activity. But when it comes to real joy and the fullness of joy, it only comes by knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Come on, somebody knows what I'm talking about. And you want to put your hands together and give God some praise. Amen. Because you know what it is to have joy. The Bible says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So we who are a part of the kingdom of God, it is righteousness. It's a peace of God that passes all understanding and it's joy in the Holy Ghost. The joy was misplaced joy. And they had misplaced joy because in my estimation, they misunderstood power. Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Like lightning, he falls from heaven. And theologians say, well, Jesus may have been referring to the initial fall of Satan in Isaiah chapter 14. So he may be referring to that. Or he may be referring to him defeating Satan in the temptation when, amen, he um, defeated him. In Luke chapter 4, when he was tempted by the devil and he saw Satan fall, or he saw Satan fell as they were proclaiming the gospel. Because when we preach the gospel and souls get saved and people come into the kingdom, there is a falling of Satan during that process. Or it may be, amen, Jesus was looking forward toward the cross and he is seen as he hangs on that cross, the victory that he will won. He will win rather for all humanity and he sees uh, Satan fall. Or he may be re um, referring to Satan's final fall in Revelation chapter 20 when he is now bound. Preaching whatever it may be, but there is an ongoing defeat of Satan. And Jesus says, I see Satan fall like lightning from heaven because there is an ongoing defeat. You see, Satan seeks to exalt himself. Amen. But the Bible says, whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And we pull down the strongholds of the enemy. And we may not be able to be seeing what is happening in the spirit realm. But when we pray, when we speak things that be not as though they were. Amen. Amen. When we speak life to dead situation, Satan falls. You don't just go through your Christian life thinking nothing is happening. Satan is falling. Somebody's here this morning and you're going through a situation where you need Satan to fall. Jesus said, I see Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And he went on in verse 19 and he says, Behold, I give unto you power because they misunderstood power. And power... Jesus says, Behold, I give unto you power. And if you read this in the Greek, it comes from the Greek word exousia. It means delegated authority. So, so this, this power here is delegated authority. So it's not power where you have power, but it's power in the context of someone delegating to you an authority. So you're not standing there on your own accord, but you're standing there because you understand that you are backed up by a, a higher power who has delegated authority onto you. So that when a policeman stands at an intersection and he stands before a truck that is coming a hundred miles an hour and he puts his hands in the air and he tells that truck, Stop. Amen. The driver of the vehicle has to stop because he understands that that policeman is standing under the authority of the government of Trinidad and Tobago and he better stop. But there is an understanding in the mind of the policeman. There is an understanding in the mind of the driver. Amen. There's an atmosphere that is created that things have to fall into alignment because the person who is standing there, who is saying stop, is backed up by the authority of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. 
When God gives us authority, we are backed up by the government of heaven, even where God sits on his throne and he is in control. So when he delegates authority, brethren, when we go, amen, into the devil's domain and we say, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Satan is defeated only in the name Jesus. Delegated authority. Power. Behold, I give unto you power. But the scripture went on, went on to say, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpent scorpions and over all the power of the devil. What is the text saying? The text is also saying that the devil has power. So while we have power, while God has given unto us power, the devil also has power. And that word power there comes from a Greek word dunamis. Dunamis. It's power like a dynamite, a dynamo. Self-creating power. Power that, that, that word there's also found in, found in Acts 1 8. Jesus says, Behold, I give unto you power. Power. To be witnesses, you shall receive power. And, and when it comes to God giving unto us power or a, a gifting, a, a, an ability, a talent, yes, the Bible says the gift and calling of God is without repentance. So God gives power. And, and, and we could... And we could not understand, you know, we, rather than operating in delegated authority, we operate in self-gratification. Because humanity likes power. <laughs> and when you're operating in power, you start to get full of yourself. And, and anyone who gets power, they tend to at many times switch. You know, there, 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 there's, you know the, uh, one of Charles Dickens' novels, very famous, The Tale of Two Cities. Um, once the commoners were in power, they began to perpetuate their own injustices. Justice-seeking people now turn into bloodthirsty thugs. Or we see it in Animal Planet, Animal Farm rather, in Animal Farm. You know, the anthropomorphic scene with those animals who had the, the human farmer and they were dreaming of this Utopian society where animals will all animals will be equal and they give seven commandments of that animals should adhere to. And a blood thirsty dictator, well a dictator, pig. You remember his name? Napoleon, he decided, he decided that he wanted to be the boss. You know, the animals end up in a worse state. People don't read those books again. Anybody know about Animal Farm? All right. You all watching me like you ain't past, you know what I'm talking about? All right, and read it to your children, all right, or, or get a movie or something, so at least they could. Very nice. And it, and, and it gives you morals of, of sometimes the same people who seeking to bring peace and seeking to have justice are the same people, if you give them a position, they will rule over you. 
The Bible talks about, in, in Matthew 20, about the mother of the sons of De Zebedee, James and John, who went to Jesus and she said, she said, she said, Jesus, when you enter into your kingdom, I want one son on your left and the other son on your right. And Jesus said to her, you know what you're asking? You know this cup I have to drink? You know this baptism that I have to be baptized with? In fact, they will be baptized and they will drink and they will go through some very difficult situation. She says, not, he said, it is not mine to give. But it seemed as if power seemed to be an attraction. Because you see, when God begins to use you and you begin to, to lay hands on people and they begin to fall out under the power of the Holy Spirit, now nobody could shake your hand because you have an anointed hand. <laughs> if you never heard it from me before, I say it again. The weakest saint has power over the devil. Casting out demons is a given. It's not a novelty. While it may be a novelty for some of us, because some of us are still afraid of demons. Some people like horror movies, but they don't want to be in it. But Christians should never be afraid of demons. We have power over the, over the demons. And I know, yes, demons have supernatural strength. Remember this Nashi guy came in church years ago. Nashi guy came into church and he was demon possessed. And four big fellas came. You know, one big guy came trying to manhandle him and he couldn't man manhandle him. And the next guy came trying to manhandle him and he couldn't. And, and about four of them trying to hold him down and I had to say to them, leave him. And just take authority over that demon in the name of Jesus. The Bible talks about seven sons of Sceva in Acts chapter 19 who tried to overpower one man that was demon-possessed. The demon-possessed man beat them up, tear off their clothes, and send them running naked. So demons are not to be played with. The devil is not to be played with. You don't entertain yourself with the spirit of fear. Amen. Because demons are real and the devil is real. And the devil has power. But he doesn't have authority. God has given unto us authority. And the devil doesn't realize that he has ongoing defeat. So he doesn't take defeat, amen, as final until the final defeat. He keeps coming again, 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 and again. And how many of us know that the plan of the devil is to steal, to kill, and to destroy? But Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. So I go to... I, Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6, where the scripture declares, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. You see, when it comes to our ability, when it comes to our power, when it comes to our anointing, it's not any meritorious work that we have done. It's not because we prayed for five hours and we read 12 chapters, but it, it is here because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's the Spirit's anointing. And when we understand that, then we understand amen, that the devils have no choice to be subjected. It's not any big thing that the devils are subjected because God is in control. And if anybody has power over the devil, it is God himself so that they had what we call misunderstood power misplaced joy misunderstood power misdirected mission in verse 2 Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 Jesus said, the harvest is ripe, or the harvest is great, rather. He said in verse 2, 
of Luke chapter 10, the harvest is great. In Matthew 9, 37, he says the, the harvest is plenteous. So in Luke, he says, truly, the harvest is great. In Matthew, he says, truly, the harvest is plenteous. The mission should have been directed or, uh, towards souls. So when they return, the celebration shouldn't be the fact that they cast out demons, but the celebration should be those who accepted Jesus Christ and those who are living for the Lord. That should have been the real celebration. They had a misdirected mission. Could I say to us this morning, it's about souls. You see people who are not saved, who are not born again of the Spirit of God. Those who are just religious. They don't realize that hell is a real place. And even if they realize and they believe it hasn't registered to them that they just need to serve the Lord because if Jesus comes and they are not prepared to meet him, then they will go take Christless eternity. And the reality of that has not hit persons sufficiently enough for them to make a decision to serve the Lord. So those of us who are saved, those of us who are born again, we now have to be evangelists. We now need to go and tell persons that they need to serve Jesus. And it's not easy. If you've been in this church a while now, you know there are two things that I say. I, it is very difficult. Very difficult. One, um, and difficult for me as a pastor, which is one, post-marital counseling. Very stressful. People who stand at the altar look, that look into each other's eyes with a smile upon their face and in my estimation, joy in their hearts are people who fighting like dog and cat. You know, post-marital, it's stressful. And as a pastor, you don't want anybody to have a failed relationship. Second, One is winning of souls. I think winning of souls is harder. You see, for somebody to come to know Jesus Christ, it takes a lot of prayer. Anybody here anybody praying for a loved one to be saved? If people wouldn't get saved. I serve in the Lord going on to 40 years now. And there are family members that I've been praying for. For all the years to get saved. And as far as some of them just religious. And I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying. And every time I pray, I pray for my family. Pray for my immediate family. I pray for my extended family, my relatives. I pray for the church family. I must confess, because of my calling, I pray for the church family more. <laughs> Almost. But I pray almost every day, if not every day. But I am perfect, so I shouldn't say every day. But almost every day. But I could see every day, because it's every day <laughs> that I could remember. And they're still not saved. How many of us? How many of us here, you've been praying for your children, you've been praying for your parents, you've been praying for your spouse, and they are still not saved. And you're calling on to God that these persons will know what it is to be born again. I know what it is. As a teenager, I got saved. Salvation is real. I didn't have to come to go to church. Nobody was sending me to church. I was the first person in my house who accepted the Lord. 
Nobody's sending it to church. Go to Bible. Go to Sunday school. Read the Bible. Pray. No, nobody, nobody was telling me to do that. But I got saved. In fact, when I got saved, I never knew sin had a weight until I became a Christian and sinned. And I could tell you this before that, I got baptized. And I still wasn't saved. So some people baptize and they're not saved because I was baptized and I was not saved. Ouch. Baptized because somebody told my mother he needs to get baptized. Well, all boy children who know he need to get baptized. <laughs> we will be having a mass baptism with boys. <laughs> Nobody saved. Amen. All of them naughty. Amen. And I used to have nightmares. Go and get baptized. You need to get baptized. My mother baptized me and my two sisters. Everybody get baptized, I think. Everybody get baptized. But you, I, well, I don't know about them. I have to fuck it for myself. You want to look, I don't want to look to my right. I'm looking straight. I was not saved. <laughs> but I got saved. I became born again of the Spirit of God. And I didn't want to curse anymore. And I didn't want to go carnival anymore. But I wanted to serve the Lord. I wanted to live for Jesus Christ. When I sin, I recognize. I had to repent and cry unto God and say, God, forgive me for my sin because the sin now had a weight. I couldn't could live. I can be naughty again. I had, to, I had to serve the Lord. And when I got saved, I tell people I was a good sinner. I, I wasn't one of those boys who smoke weed and go and rob nobody. And I don't, all them kind of thing. Thief nobody, foul and all kind of thing. I, I didn't know about that. But I got saved. God changed my life. And there are persons who are here this morning. You're here. You need to get saved. You need, you need to know what it is to, to live for Jesus and to have that transformation within your life. Salvation is a real experience. And you're going through what you're going through. Amen. Because you may be religious, but you're not saved. You're not born again. And God wants to save our souls. It's all about souls because people need Jesus. So it's not about the demons. Stop celebrating because they could cast out demons. You know, casting out demons is a big thing. Well, it may just be because if somebody demon possessed begin to manifest in the congregation, some of you will be looking for the closest exit. You know. <laughs> so I tell you, I, I have seen some situations. You know, the, the, the church just all of a sudden, you're praying for the person who, who, who demon possessed to cast out that demon. And when you lift, you find the, well, the people going home. <laughs> Place gets scarce. You know, you know, children don't like to sit down, sit next to their parents in church. <laughs> children find their parents. <laughs> They're close to their parents. Or their parent calling them, come, come, come. Because I don't want anything to fall on you. If, you. if you are a parent and you're saved, there is a covering over your children. Now you see, we don't go Bible study, so we don't know that. So somebody manifests, we feel that the demon is going to leave them and come on your child because your child is naughty. You are the covering for your child. You're calling them close to you just in case a demon fall on them. It's not about demons. It's not about serpents and scorpions. It's about souls. Misdirected mission. Fourthly, because they were not focused, they didn't 
submit themselves to the mandated prayer. Jesus said in verse 2 of Luke 10, because the harvest is great, because this harvest is great and the laborers are few, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers. Because the problem, the real problem, is not, is not the harvest. The problem based upon our teaching in, in John chapter 15, the real problem is the branches, the laborers. The branches are the fruit producers. The branches, amen, are the ones that will produce fruit. So God, the Bible says that God now prunes the branches. Pray the Lord of the harvest that he send forth laborers, laborers. Pray the Lord that he will send people. Because those of us who are doing the work of the Lord, they will tell you, we will tell you. As I would say oftentimes, is it for people to get saved? It's no easy task. Ministries are built on people coming from other people's church. Not easier. Create some excitement on YouTube and, and, and have some conferences and have some different workshops and have this and that so you can get people from different churches who saved already. Easy to build a ministry like that. But is it to build a ministry of people who now coming to know Jesus Christ for the first time, that's the real challenge. We have to pray. And it's tough. And when you're doing what God says unto you to do, you cry out for help. God, send some laborers. Send some individuals who will go forth. Because I can tell you this, if 50 of us just win one person every year, For five years, that's 250 people. And if the first 50 who win 50, disciple the 50, be not, you move from 50 to 100, and that 100 continue to this disciple, and you get from 200, 100 to 200, and you disciple those persons, you go from 200 to 400, and you disciple those persons. And just in one year, you just win in one person to the Lord every year. Wow. But we don't do what God wants us to do. Because let me tell you, the devil orchestrating it. Because he knows that he has lost already. And his time is limited. And because his time is limited, he wants those who are not saved to remain unsaved. He wants he want, he want company in hell. A place where the worms die not. A place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. He wants a company in that place. God wants us to be diligent and be obedient. So let's submit ourselves to God and not have misplaced joy, misunderstood power, Misdirected mission. Have mandated prayer. You need to pray. Prayer changes, not only changes things, but prayer changes people. I tell people I became a pastor because I believe I prayed too much. But what prayer did, prayer, prayer qualified me to ministry. Anybody in the church who starts to pray, God raises them up. Anytime you begin to pray, anytime you begin to seek God, anytime you begin to awake early in the morning or take some time during the day or even in the night time and you begin to pray, God will raise you up. God will begin to use you. You will recognize God will begin to open doors. Amen. You now move to a place like Jesus. Matthew 9.36 The Bible says, and when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. Because as believers, many times we don't see the multitude. And we, we are not moving with compassion. 
When you are moved with compassion, we are told something in, in, uh, in, in Luke chapter 15 about lost sheep. This shepherd had a hundred sheep. And one of his one sheep was lost. He left the ninety and nine in the wilderness and went after the lost sheep. When he found that sheep, he celebrated. So verse 7 said, I say unto you that likewise joy, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over the ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So more than one person being saved, the real celebration taking place because one, not the 1991. So you see all of us who are in church and who saved and who born again? You know, hell, heaven is thankful. But you see when somebody gets saved, now they rejoicing in heaven. We also see it with the lost coin in verse 10. And previous verses talks about the lost coin where this lady had 10 pieces of silver. She lost one. And she cleaned out the place and she looked for that, that piece of silver, that one, that lost coin. And when she found it, amen, she celebrated. She called persons to celebrate with her. Verse 10 says, likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Talking about heaven, you're talking about angels celebrating over one person repenting. We also read the story, continue reading the story of the prodigal son. Children who grew up in church, who in the house of the Lord and they backslide. And they go on out in the world and they're eating pig food. And they think that they're enjoying themselves. And we have to pray that they come to their senses. Because many of them do not come to their senses. And for years they're eating pig food. And they don't realize it. Amen. But all the parties and all the lime and all the avenue and all the, and all the, the, the movie tongue lime and all the stink and dirty and all the... Carnival and all the bacchanal is pig food. I thought I would have gotten a bigger amen than that. Pig food, pig food, pig food. And all the weed they're smoking, pig food, people losing their brain. Intelligent men talking foolishness because they're smoking too much, pig food. Intelligent people who are drinking too much alcohol, talking nonsense, pig food. Eating, drinking, smoking, pig food. But the Bible says, all through the process, the Father, I changed the title. Theologians call that passage of Scripture the prodigal son. I call that passage of Scripture the good father. I think that passage is more about God who was there looking, waiting, praying for the son. That the Bible says the father saw the son afar off coming. Because the father was there waiting for him. The father wasn't in the house sleeping. The father was outside waiting, looking. Amen. And you're only looking because you... You're believing because you would have been praying, because you would have been somewhere doing something. You know, probably come off of a fast and you're like Elijah praying for rain. And you're saying to yourself, well, go and look to see if it's raining, if, if there is any rain. And the Bible says the servant went not until seven times. And when he came back, he says, I see a cloud as big as a man's hand. Theologian says, amen. While the servant was seeing a cloud like a man's hand. 
Elijah was seeing the hand of God getting ready to move. When we begin to pray, amen, we don't just pray and remain in the closet, but we come out of the closet and we look in, amen, we looking for the prodigal son, amen, we searching for the lost coin because we believe that we will find it, amen, we going out and we looking for the lost sheep, amen, because we will find them because there's a faith, there's a belief, amen, that souls are important to God and God is able to save and God is able to deliver. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is still in the saving business. God is able to save. God is able to keep. God is able to satisfy. Amen. As I we go back to Luke, Luke chapter 10, the Bible says, Jesus says, rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Your names are written in heaven. He said, that is your real rejoicing. Amen. Friday night I was there preparing. Amen. Finishing up the sermon, preparing. I said, I don't want Saturday to come and I don't finish the sermon. So I was there preparing, finishing the sermon. And in, in, in Luke chapter 10, go back to Luke chapter 10. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And I went to names, and while I was there, I said, well, the context of this is that the 70 of them, names are written in heaven. That, that is what your rejoicing should be. Rejoice in names are in heaven. Don't rejoice because they could cast out demons. But first time in all my Christian life, I thought it may not just be the names of the disciples, 70 of them, and 70 of them who in my estimation was naughty. You know, you know, you know when, in Mo when Moses sent out the 12 spies, at least two of them came back with a good report. Two out of 12 came back with a good report. In this case, 70 of them. None of them come back rejoicing over the right thing. All 70 of them rejoicing because they could cast out demons. That is it. Well, I could understand that, right? But that's it. And I thought, you know, when we have camp or when we have a crusade or we have a street meeting or we go track distribution or we go house to house witnessing or whatever evangelistic activity or we're in church and somebody comes to the altar and they repent and amen and we get their name. I said, that is a real celebration. The real celebration are the names of those who come to know Jesus Christ, whose names are now written in heaven. And, and we in the book of Revelation, let me tell you, when that book opened and God writes your name, Nobody could take your name. They could try to erase your name. Hallelujah. When, when, when your life gets into the hand of God and God is holding your life, nobody could pluck you out of the hand of God. I remember when I got saved, those guys telling me I went back in school. Those guys say, God, I've given you two weeks. But they call me free in those days. They say, free, I've given you two weeks. Free, you, you take it out, free is some girl you see in the church. You, you, not you, not you, not you. You like carnival, amen, and you like all of, you know, the different things. You're not staying in church, but a God has kept me. God has kept me. Hallelujah, God. And nobody was able to pluck me. A mature gentleman who we respect, a family friend, came to me and said, what are you what are serving the Lord so young for? Come on, man. You go and play yourself and enjoy life. You're a young man. And I, and I consider what he was saying. Enjoy myself. Play myself. Enjoy life. Wait until you get old to serve the Lord. Well, I see some friends recently who still not serve any Lord. 
and they're looking old. I said, Lord, I thank you. And I know that we're like those guys. <laughs> but I could tell you this. You wait until you're old. If it's, you wait until you're old, you might never serve the Lord. I thank God that I could have given God my youth, my strength. Some people, they get old, they can't do anything. All they could do is come to the church and give an offering. That is it. Towards this and that. I can work for the Lord. I have energy. Amen. I spend years just serving the Lord. Amen. Youth ministries, men's ministries, crusaders. Amen. Planning sports, planning, planning all night, planning street meeting, planning crusade, this, that. Amen. Church, no confront this. My goodness. Amen. You give God your strength, your energy. And I ain't tired yet. Well, when you're male and you're tired yet, you just feel good, right? Men know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Full of energy still. In the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I remember I could preach three times over the weekend and still go again. Amen. God, God is faithful. Amen. When you give God your life, God preserves you. You might tell people, God has preserved my youth. Amen. Sometimes I overdo it, my, I overdo my own self. But that has nothing to do with God. That has to do with me. Amen. And my irresponsibility in terms of not managing myself properly. But God is a faithful God. I want to say God is still able to save. God is able, still able to keep it. And God is still able to satisfy those of us who are saved. God is calling upon us. Amen. To, to become laborers. God is calling upon us to go and tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. To win some souls for his honor and for his glory. And I want to encourage us today. So we want to pray. We want to pray. We want to pray. We want to pray the Lord of the harvest. That he will send us forth as laborers. The harvest is great. It's not just a nice harvest, you know. When, when the harvest is great, they're talking about plenty fruit to pick. I'm tell you, real people out there going to hell. Sometimes you, you, you pass and you see some blocks and so forth early Sunday morning, like it had some incident on the main road. And if you see people, we come into church for 7 o'clock. Minister 7 this morning, a whole set of people outside who didn't sleep last night. Who lime whole night. Lord have mercy. I said, God, I wish when we call all night, we could get all these people to come all night. But they could lime all night. Let me tell you, when you're bound, you're bound, you know. All night you're liming. And you're bound and you don't even know it. And you're like a zombie going so whole night. All night, all night. Sucking on a beer, sucking on something. Oh. Hey boy, what it is? You okay? Yeah. We are there to smoke, yeah. All night, all night. Lord have mercy. Night make us sleep. We want to pray. Stand with me. And we're praying because we, not, we need to see the multitude. We need to see the multitude. We need to see our spouses. We need to see our children. We need to see our parents. We need to see our siblings. We need to see some nieces and nephews. We need to see our neighbors. We need to see some co-workers. People who we haven't been working with for years and they're still not saved. Good people, yes, but they're going to hell. They're not saved. They don't know what it is to be born again. They find we, we wasting time every week being in church, being in church, because they don't know what it is to serve the Lord. Father, we come to you this morning in the name of your dear son, Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you will truly minister by your Holy Spirit, 
God, we are praying this morning that you will send forth laborers. We come to you, God, that you will send forth laborers. Sending forth laborers. Send forth laborers, oh God. Father, send us. Send me. Send my brother. Send my sister. God, so many people we meet on a daily basis and we don't share the love of Christ with them. God, we don't encourage them to serve the Lord and to live for Jesus. We don't take some time to invite them to church. Oh God, we don't take some time and God pray for them. Some people need prayer. Somebody just needs somebody to lay hands upon them and pray. And God, I pray today that we will go forth with that message of peace. We will go forth with that message of peace to a stressed and frustrated world. We will go forth with that message of hope, with that message of deliverance, with an anointing upon our lives in the name of Jesus. And I pray for us this morning. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. Oh God, I pray, I pray, I pray for this church. I pray for me as a pastor. I pray for every department, every department leader. I pray in the name of Jesus. That God, you will touch us. That you will strengthen us. That you will awaken us. That God, we are coming to the end of the age. Any moment, God, the rapture could, could take place. The trumpet could sound. The dead in Christ could rise first. Awaken us out of spiritual sleep. Oh God, demand it to pray. We have not been praying as we ought to pray. We have not been sick in your face. The word declares, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Oh God, as we begin, we need to pray. We need to seek your face. We need to turn from our wicked ways. Oh God, that revival could take place in this nation. Revival could take place in our church. In the name of Jesus, we pray for revival. We pray that there will be a fresh, a fresh anointing of the Spirit of God. A fire that will begin to burn. A power, a grace, a strength that will move through this congregation. This church called St. James Pentecostal Church. That there will be a fire in the name of Jesus. That we will understand that it's not about power. It's not about power. It's not about power. But it's about authority. It's about a grace, a certification by God who will anoint us and appoint us and certify us and cause us to do exploits for his honor and for his glory. And God, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, for doing this mighty work in the mighty name of Jesus. Every chain broken, every burden lifted. Oh God, transformation occurring in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we would stop entertaining believers. Oh, needy believers who always want, some, want somebody to pray for them. Always want somebody to rub their head, rub their back. Oh God, somebody to just be there for them all the time. And God not focusing on souls. But in the name of Jesus, I break that stronghold. I break that strong man. I drive out that strong man in the name of Jesus. And God, we declare liberty and victory. Help us to pray, oh God, and call upon your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There are those who are here this morning, even as our heads are bowed, and you're not saved, you're not born again of the Spirit of God, and God has been speaking to you through the service. There are those of you also online, you're viewing, you're not saved, you're not born again of the Spirit of God, and God has been speaking to you. You're not saved. You're not born again. You know if Jesus is to come at this time, you are not prepared to meet him. And God is speaking to you. Or has spoken to you. And you want to say yes to God. You want to repent of your sins. You want to say, Pastor, say a prayer for me. I need to make a decision to serve the Lord and to live for Jesus. And if you're here this morning and you're not saved, even as the saints are praying, I want you to lift your hands and say, Pastor, pray for me. There's such a person. Just lift your hand right where you are. Amen. I see one person lifting their hand. Is there another person? You want to lift your hand and say yes to God. Hallelujah. Is there another person? Hallelujah. 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 
Amen. Those of you who are online, you want to say yes to God. Amen. I want you to, amen, just show the raise hand icon on the screen. Amen. And those who will be viewing later on, amen, because it's not a live service for you. We want to pray. We want to pray and we want to, I want to ask the congregation to join in this prayer, this prayer of repentance as we pray at this time. Amen. And those of you who are online, I want you to stop and pray this prayer of repentance with me as we believe God to save souls. Somebody who is not saved will be drawn to the bloodstained cross of Christ and their life will be transformed by the power of his spirit. Say, Father, I come to you in the name of your dear son, Jesus. I recognize that I am a sinner in need of a savior. I repent of all my sins. I ask you to wash me in the blood of Jesus. That you will make me a new person. I confess Jesus as Lord of my life. I endeavor to live for him. To serve him in spirit and in truth. Thank you God for saving me. For keeping me. For satisfying me. In Jesus name. Amen. Father, I thank you, oh God, even for that young lady who said yes to you. I thank you for the many more who online will say yes to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray you keep in power. I pray your grace and your strength that the blessing of the Lord would rest upon them mightily. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Even as we close our online, let me say to you, May the Lord bless you and keep you and allow his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, give you strength in your going out, in your coming in. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We close our online. You may have your seats. Those of us who are in church.